Hello everyone, I am Namita and today I am going to take you to an old Gupta temple located in Bhitargaon which is about 35 kilometers away from Kanpur in Uttar Pradesh. The name of the temple, Bhitargaon, suggests its location. Bhitar means inner. According to the legend, it was located in the inner area of an ancient village called Phulpur. It is the oldest Hindu temple having a high roof or shikhar. The credit for restoring this temple goes to King Shiv Pratap. Restoration work was carried out by Alexander Cunningham who visited the temple in 1877 on invitation of King Shiv Pratap. The temple is built on a square plan and has double recessed corners. Terracotta decorations on the walls of the temple lend it a unique look. Most of the Gupta rulers were worshippers of Lord Vishnu. We know from coins they have issued and idols that have been found and also from other temples like the Shavata temples that they were followers of Lord Vishnu. In this temple we find carvings and decorations. Some are not very clear but some show idols of Lord Ganesh and Goddess Durga. We do not find any statue right now inside the temple. Right now there is a lock and there is no idol inside the temple. But one day this temple must have been in a glorious state. But today it is lying in silence. So many years ago, so many, yes, so many. As we know, this temple was built in 5th century CE, which must be around 1500 years ago. That time, this temple must have had many more engravings, which they have now. But they have not survived the test of time and they must have looked wonderful. Even now, this place is lovely. This temple is made of terracotta bricks. There are still some engravings that can be found on the walls of the temple. There are also some empty places like this which must have had some decorations long time back. You can see that the carvings are there and these are very beautiful. The artisans must have been very good at their job. They still look very nice. I would like to tell you that this is supposed to be the oldest temple belonging to the Gupta period. There are also other temples which were built by them means belonging to the Gupta period like the Dashavata temple but this temple also has an important place in history. Here we can see at the temple decorations many idols. The carving of Vara Avatar could point out that maybe this temple had an idol of Lord Vishnu inside it. But nothing is known for certain if this was there or not. I would like to share something with you all. I have written a book along with my nephew Yash. The name of the book is Gupta Vansham, Golden Era Reimagined. This is about Gupta Dynasty, Golden Era Reimagined because we have tried to reimagine the period which is called the Golden Period of Indian History. This book is an historical fiction which is based on historical facts but some interesting stories have been added to make it an interesting read. 
Why? Is the Gupta period called the golden period of Indian history? There are a lot of reasons for it. Like, there was a lot of advancement in the field of art, architecture, science, technology, as well as literature. It is believed that the great Sashit poet Kalidas lived in the court of one of the Gupta kings, Chandragupta Vikramaditya, as is Navratan on Nainjoy. Gupta dynasty produced wonderful rulers who were not just great warriors but also patrons of art and literature. They also took interest in public utility works like we you know from an inscription of Sandhu that he got the Sudarshan Lake reconstructed which was a water reservoir as it had developed some problem. We know about the Gupta period from the coins issued by the king along with their inscriptions and literary accounts as well as accounts of foreigners like that of Pai Hing, a Chinese traveler who visited India during this time. The Nalanda University is said to have been constructed during this period and Ajanta paintings, most of them, were made this during this period too. We have a genealogy in the book which gives an account of the kings along with their wives and sons and also about the fictional characters created by us. One thing that really we were very attracted to both Yash and myself and we really appreciated was the education system during that time. This we have mentioned in our first chapter, where the first ruler of the Gupta dynasty, Sri Guru, who was not son of a ruler, but later on became the ruler, was dead. And we have shown him going to a Gurukul. Gurukul was a place where children from all parts came and studied, stayed with their guru or teacher, and did what the teacher said irrespective from where they came from, from how rich or how poor they were. They could be poor, they could be rich, but they were treated equally and there was no state interference. The word of the Guru was fine. And where they lived, they served the Guru and they learned so many things. And then when they came back, they could give back to the society what they had got. This is something wonderful. And Kalidas had mentioned about the beautiful Gurukuls. His description about the Gurukul in Raghuvansham is wonderful. Actually, Raghuvansham is a book in which Kalidas has described the rulers of the Ishwaku dynasty. And the word Guptavansham is inspired by Raghuvansham. I felt so happy after Raghu Vansham and I was really impressed by Kalidas' writing and the way he had covered many kings of one dynasty and written down in a book that I also thought that it is possible. I discussed it with Yash and both of us agreed to write this book. Gupta rulers issued a lot of coins. Many of them were made of gold. The content of gold in these coins are very high, especially that belonging to Chandragupta Vikramaditya. 